Okay, I want to document the process I'm using to repair, do repairs on this because I, I like the way this is turning out and I want to do it, use the same method again. So what you don't see here is this uh, part of the fender here, right here, was all, was dented in, crunched up, uh, and, 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 and so on, enough so that it just, didn't look good and I was about to put the front apron on and I said you know what if I'm going to address that I need to address it now and uh, you can tell by the by the damage here that it was uh, it was pretty pretty bad and so uh, before I put the front apron on, on though I wanted to fix this now this is a temporary repair I'm going to uh, it's someday maybe I'll paint it after I work do what other TR3 I'll, you know um, I may paint this, but I just wanted it to look, you know, like a good 10 footer. Um, so the big first big challenge I had was how do I, how do I beat this back out? This was, was dented in, it was pushed in this way and, and this was pulling this panel in and how do I deal with that? And I, I can't get a hammer behind it. I can't really pull on it here. And so on. And then one day it hit me. Um, I was I, I was back in my back of my shop, and I found this old rail off my off my uh, table saw that uh, I replaced with a with a, a nice one. But this is nice and thick, and I said, "Hey, you know what I could do is I could uh, just mount it right there like that with the holes, and then I could screw put put bolts in those holes with washers in in, in these holes." With washers behind him and I could just pull it forward and that's what I that's what I did and it worked really really well I'm, I'm very happy with that so uh, then I used uh, then I I had I, it wasn't quite perfect and I didn't want to I didn't want to really worry about it too much but it, I had a little bit of a dent in not a lot so uh, I just my next step was uh, I went ahead and used Bondo sanded that down got that about right and then I used Bondo's glazing two-part spot, spot putty last time I did body work it was one part stuff so using two part was new for me uh, but it worked it worked really well and then I sanded it down to 800 and and I painted it with some fairly well matching this is the original this is the paint uh, of the uh, that the previous owner put on it and you can see here's the here's the new paint you can it's a little different but it's close enough where people aren't going to notice it um, and, and I went down to my local um, supplier and got them to they they color matched it and, and they did it as a 28 but then I ended up having to get him to tweak it because he was just wrong and we worked on it worked on it worked on it and I finally gave up because this is again temporary um, and so I, I sprayed the, sprayed this and this looks really good I'm just gonna leave that alone but what you can see is in the transition zone uh, I've got this I've got to deal with this and the way I was taught to do this is you you kind of fog you, you fog and then you put you know a little bit more fog and then you medium layer and then you medium wet here and so you have this transition into your other paint so what i'm going to use now is uh been a long time since i've done this kind of work and and since then 3m has come out with a auto system step one two three and four where uh step one is remove step two is smooth step three is blend and step four is polish now um so uh, I'm in the polish stage now. I need to polish out this. So I'm going to go ahead and go through those four steps with the 3M stuff. I've had I've had the sandpaper soaking in in the soaking for a while. Um, oh, I wanted to talk about the bondo thing too. I wanted to talk about that cur sanding this curved surface and needing a. Uh, Sand, a flexible sanding block that would conform to that surface so I didn't get wackiness. And, and I came up with something interesting. I, I found in my 
in the back of my shop again. Piece of vinyl left over from uh, from vinyl siding one of my houses a long time ago, and uh, and I came up with this idea that really worked well. I took some of this uh, flexible. This is 180. Took some of, some of the flexible 180 grit, and I laid it down on the surface like like this. I laid it, I laid a length of it down on the surface and peeled the tape off, and then I pushed this flexible vinyl against it and it made the vinyl when I was done the vinyl had the t had the uh, had the sandpaper on it and it was curved right to the right to the shape of the uh, of the car and I used that to uh, to sand out the uh, to sand out the bondo finally to get it, in, it nicely to conform to that uh, curve I was really happy with how that worked out so I don't have didn't have a flexible sanding block and I like this one because it just stayed in place to the right curve so um, where am I so I'm going to go through the go through the four uh, sandpaper grits here starting from a thousand and ending up on uh, 2500 and then at the end of that I'm going to use I'm going to polish it out with some of this Megular's ultimate um, polishing compound. Now I've already used this. Somebody keyed this car uh, at one point and it looked really bad. There's a big z big Z here. Um, where's the other one? A big a big Z right here and if I hold it just right you can see remnants of it there. But that was really bad. It was a big ugly thing and uh, and the, this stuff got it out pretty pretty well. I didn't even use the sandpaper, so I'm going to use this as my final um, my final product to uh, get rid of this fog zone and blend these two paints together and see how it turns out. So I'm going to go ahead and go through my four grades of sandpaper um, and. and uh, see where I am I'll take another video at that point and then uh, and then I'll up and then I'll do the compound the polishing compound at the end and see where see where we're at okay um, I just got done with the 25 all the way down to 2500 and I broadened the area of the 2500 coverage I did most of it that way I got out whatever scratch between each grid I got out whatever scratches that I knew that the com polishing compound wouldn't get out from the uh, or they would take too much compound based on my experience with the rest of the hood and playing with getting scratches out there so uh, I didn't make it perfect because the rest of the body has orange peel on it and I didn't want to make this absolutely perfectly shiny although I think it's going to be I wanted it to blend in um, the line between the two paints uh, is pretty much gone. Uh, I think this line here is the is the repair line from where uh, from where it actually I repaired it and added glazing. But this side's the new paint. This side's the old paint with some fog in. So uh, and this is the repair line, which I probably if I was blocking it better, we wouldn't see that line. So uh, I think I'm happy with that. We'll see what happens. I brought it all the way back to here with the 2500. I didn't do this with the thousand grit. I stuck to the, the, the thousand grit, or I did the thousand grit on up right on the on the area where there's the fog, and then uh, when I hit the twenty five hundred grit, I brought it all the way over to the new paint, and now I'm gonna try the compound and see what that does. It's almost done. I can't wait to see if that made a decent repair. Okay, I really need to get a power polisher. I did this all by hand. Um, again, I'll find the picture of the front as it was crunched before, but I'm really, really happy with that. This is just a temporary repair, so it doesn't look horrible. Um, uh, horrible. You can see the little bit of color difference. You know, the color changes over right there, but. Uh, but I think that's that's good enough for what I for what I wanted one at. It'll be interesting to see it in the sunshine, see if that gets really glaringly the other color, especially when it's up against the front apron. 
but uh, I'm I'm happy with that to get make it a ten footer. Now I'm gonna now I want to repair this uh, this spot right here. <laughs> so so uh, yeah, that makes me feel more confident in painting painting the car myself. I've never painted a whole car. I prepped the whole car myself. My first uh, my first Triumph. So here's some pictures of my first Triumph. Um, this is about 1980, and uh, old time camera. I had just painted this. You notice the front bumper's not on, and there's uh, there's uh, paint on the wheels. Um, I rebuilt the uh, engine in that garage right there, and yeah, again, paint on the wheels. It came out really well. I, I should have done it black because the the white paint job doesn't do it justice. Anyway. That was my first one. I prepped it and a friend of mine painted it, but uh, uh, I'm thinking about maybe, you know, learning, teaching myself to, to, to paint. Yeah, you can really see the color change that way. Anyway, uh, I'm happy about that. See what it looks like in the sun.